Greetings, this is Jared Love, and in this video I will be going over how to set up a space switching system, also called dynamic parenting, with matrix nodes instead of through constraints. This is kind of a follow-up video to a previous video I posted where I went over how to create a constraint using Maya's matrix nodes instead of using the default constraints that, that Maya uses. So to start off with in this little scene, I've got a pretty simple setup. This is just basically a, an FK chain. And I know I got, I got a little crazy. I, I put little eyes and nose on it this time. You know, most of my <laughs> examples are really simple, but he's still simple. But uh, yeah, so uh, in this example, I have, uh, I've set up the neck. I, I wouldn't normally set up a neck with a space switch in it, but I went ahead and did it for this video. And I also have a space switch on the head to illustrate the differences between the two. So uh, just very quickly for those who are not familiar with what a space switch is, which I'm pretty sure you would be, but it, it's basically a way to have something follow another part of your rig as if it's parent constrained or orient constrained to it, and then be able to switch to another part of the, the rig. So for example, like on this head, you may want... Um, like an FK nature so that it follows the neck as if it's, you know, orient constrained with the neck uh, and still have the ability to offset it, of course. Or you may have a situation where you want it actually to stay in kind of a world space or a master location, regardless of how you rotate anything above it in its uh, hierarchical chain. So... And again, like I said, you can you can have it offset and then it just retains that that kind of orientation. So um, the typical way you would see this uh, set up is with my regular constraints. So that's how I actually set up the neck. In this situation, I've got uh, basically just the master node, the what I'm calling the hips and the chest. So that's this master node, the hips, and then the chest. And the setup would look something like this. So you would have, you'd have like your neck control in this case. Let me pull this over here. And um, your buffer node above it would be the, the node that you're actually constraining. So you would take, in this case, the master control, the hips control, and the chest control. You orient constrain the buffer node of whatever you're driving with that so that this allows you to have that offset ability so that you can rotate this freely and still maintain the, the orient constraining. And then what you need to do is you need to actually drive the weights of the constraint to where as you change your attributes for your enum here, it would pick which of the weights to actually turn on for your constraint. So when you have it set to master, master would be one, these two would also be zero. At hips, this is one, and these two are zero. At chest, this is one, and these two are zero. So, uh, pretty easy. And I've got it set up with a condition node. I've also seen set-driven keys. I prefer not doing the set-driven keys because you have to have, for as many spaces that you have, so in this case there would be three, you actually have to have three points on that set driven key for each of your uh, driven channels because you have to tell it hey for this guy when the enum is set to zero then this is one but then at one and two it's zero for both of those so and if you have more than three or you know it gets a little uh, bogged down with that but with this uh, condition node it's just saying okay the first term is the actual enum attribute that you have for switching between the spaces. And it says when it's equal to zero, then the color true is gonna be one, color false is zero, and you only need the one channel here. So the master one is essentially when you're at zero, you want it to be the master. For the hips, it's one, because when the enum is at one, so zero, one, two, it's going to be the hips, so that this guy then says when one is equal to one, then the output is one because you're driving the weight value of this right here. Uh, so hopefully I have not 
beaten that dead horse too badly. So I set up the head with the matrix method for doing this. And if you don't know how to set up a matrix constraint, you can check out my previous video. I'm kind of referring to that a lot in this video, but watch that and that will give you an idea of how to actually do it. So here is the setup for the matrix constraint in this particular case. Um, now this is a this is a very simple case because all of these controls have the exact same orientation. So I just did a really easy orient constraint between them. The difference is that, and this is slightly deceiving in that the head has one more item than the neck did. And it's just because I didn't want to create a whole duplicate hierarchy of, of the whole chain, just to show this difference between them. So the head actually has one more input because I've got the neck, I've got the master hips, chest, and neck. So if you were to imagine this setup with another um, another driver node and another condition node in the constraint pumping in, that's kind of what this equivalent would be. So what we do is we create essentially a matrix constraint, which is basically these three nodes, but we add in a choice node. And so the choice node, basically all it does is it says, okay, I have this array of inputs, I have a selector, and whatever selector it's set to, it takes that input and spits that out for the output. So it's a really simple node. And in this case, what we're doing is we're feeding in the matrix, sorry, the world matrix for all of the drivers. So all of the drivers feed into the input 0, 1, 2, 3. And then the space attribute on here, which is where we're actually selecting the, the headspace that we want to master, neck, hips, chest, whatever. And so that directly correlates to this and then it outputs that matrix which goes in as our primary matrix and then the parent node world inverse matrix is what feeds in next in the molt matrix so then of course that goes into the decompose and then into the actual rotation of our buffer node for the control so that allows us to like I like I have here, I've got it set on master. So it's basically saying I'm going to take the master's world matrix input, feed that into my molt matrix, take this guy's world inverse matrix, because that's the parent node, to create a parent constraint or an orient constraint in this case for this guy's buffer node. So that then when you rotate pretty much anything below it, it's going to retain the orientation with the master because that's what we've got selected. Okay. So that's really it. That's the, that's the gist of it. And like I said, this is a very simple example because there was no offset needed. So I will show you actually a, a version with an offset. So I added these hands on here and this is going to be more like a parent constraint because for these IK arms you would actually need the orientation and translation to sync up. So I think right now they're in, if I look correctly, yeah, they're in master space and they each have a master, hips, chest, clavicle, and head space. So depending on what I want, I can have it follow either the master or the hips, the chest, the clavicle, or the head. So if I had a situation where, uh, like he was holding his head or something, I could have the control up there and have it follow his, his head as it rotates. Now, the way you would do this, uh, kind of, I guess, traditionally uh, with constraints, you're going to have a setup very similar. The only difference is that at least to the best of my knowledge, every time I've tried it, when I have a different offset between each of the, the drivers, it messes up because I think the constraint can only store one offset. It can't store an offset per driver. So what you have to do is you end up making a bunch of, uh, in this case, I've got locators that are parented to your different parts. So if we take a look at the outliner here, you see in my 
my hierarchy chain of basically the torso here, I've got all of these space X form nodes for each of the different parts. So this arm was set up with Maya's constraints. This arm was set up with the matrix stuff. So just looking at this hierarchy, you can see, I mean, it's, it's clogged up a little bit because of all these transforms. Um, just for sake of comparison between the two, this is the hierarchy for the left arm, which is all done with matrix constraints and matrix space switching system. And by that, I mean the matrix nodes. And then this, I did it all with just constraints. So you can see very quickly and easily just the, the difference in the hierarchy between them. So you don't even really need all of these guys, essentially, but you do if you're doing a constraint with Maya's constraints, because what you end up doing is you create a node. It could be an empty transform. I'm using locators just so you can see it. And then you parent them, like I said, to all of the different parents that you want. And you make sure that they all have the same orientation so that then when you take your uh, your node you're actually driving, which is in this case is the IK buffer, and you constrain between all of your different locator guys, then it's going to have a clean switch between those. So if I grab the head and I rotate it out, you see this guy is what's parented to that head control, so it maintains that space, and all of these guys have their own, you know, as well. Uh, so, yeah, so each of these locators basically maintains its position with its parent so that then when you are going between these guys, you go, I want to be on the hips, I want to be on the chest, I want to be on the head, you know, whatever the case may be. And the reason it's popping around is because you're not doing a blending between them which you could do if you wanted to, but really just having a matching system that it basically just says, okay, when I switch to, say, the head one or, or whatever, it looks for the current position of the control, assigns the switch, and then moves and rotates the control back to that position in world space so you would have that transition happen in a single frame so that it doesn't actually look like it pops between them. Um, so so yeah, going back and looking at this, um, you can see how as you add in more of these, you're, you're having to add in an extra transform node, you've got your condition node or set driven key, which is driving your constraint, and then that is then driving your buffer node. So this is the network for the matrix version. And they both work exactly the same. Uh, I mean, you can, if I take both of these guys and I say I want to be in, let's just put it in chest space. So now it, it's going with the chest. So you see that the controls themselves stay. And then if I move the head, it's anyway. Um, or we can put it in clavicle space, so, you know. Um, so, as in the, the last video about the matrix constraints, you what you have to remember how to do is create that offset to be the first item that goes into your molt matrix, so that you're taking the offset of your driven node from its driver node, so the offset in space, the matrix in space for just that difference, and that gets fed in as your uh, matrix in zero, and then your world space matrix of your driver feeds in as the matrix in one, and then of course your parent's world inverse matrix is going in as the matrix in two. Uh, so, in this case, we have two choice nodes. The main one, this would be the same as, as this system here, where the, the matrix that's 
being fed into the choice node is actually the driver nodes world matrix. And then the this guy is the offset one. So you don't have to create an extra attribute um, that has all the matrix data in it. I, I just did it in this video like the last video to show where that connection is going and what it's doing. You could just um, calculate the offset and then apply it with a set adder uh, on the actual input zero, input one, etc. So you have both of these choice nodes, they're basically just a pairing for each other. So input zero on your main space choice node is the world matrix, input zero is the offset for that particular corresponding driver node. And your space attribute here, the actual one you're using to select which offset and which driver matrix to pass in, uh, it's the same. So you just connect that space to the selector and then those feed into your molt matrix into the decompose matrix and then into your driven node so it's a much smaller system of connection so you know again you don't have all of these connections from every driver node going into your constraint with all of the cyclical connections some even within the node itself uh, although i guess if you wanted to you could you could open these up and um, feed in the um, the actual condition node from from each one into the target weights since this is just a connection that goes like that from it these attributes are something that get added when you create a constraint just to make it easier to see what's connected to where but you don't really need that so now if you wanted to blend these, um, you can do that. You would need a, a weight add matrix. So this node is kind of similar to the molt matrix node in that uh, you have the, the matrix in, but for each index, you also have the ability to tell it how much weight it has. So what your what your resulting um, network for this would look like would be you'd have to actually have a a molt matrix for each driver where you would create with your let's say I'll just do it for the master so you would create you'd have your master offset you'd have your master of course. Uh, you'd have your master world matrix going in, and then then you would have the parents world inverse matrix coming in. So you would actually create that matrix first, which is essentially what this is doing through the choice nodes. So you'd create that matrix and then take the matrix sum, plug it in there, and then you would have to have some way to drive the weight, which you could... Um, for blending, I guess you would actually have to have an animator controlled attribute for every single one of them. Unless you would just have two, then you could use a reverse node to turn one on while the other goes off. But essentially you would have this kind of setup for every single one. And as you add them, you would get another uh, index. And then your matrix sum goes into your decompose matrix, which goes into the buffer node. So you you could technically blend them together if you want. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, as you can see, it's a it's a much cleaner system. Um, yeah, I prefer using the matrix stuff myself because it gets rid of all those cycles. And anyway, I hope you found this video useful. And feel free to leave any questions or comments. And have a blessed day.